Okay, so today we, uh, Devin has asked me to speak on praying like Jesus. So there's a few things I want to go over. Um, uh, basically how Jesus taught the disciples how to pray when they asked, when they uh, were talking about the uh, Pharisees and the way they were praying out loud. Um, there's a few prayers I want to talk about in the Old Testament that just grabbed my attention. Um, kind of go in with, uh, it's going to kind of tie together later. Because um, I do believe there's a, a simplicity to prayer as well as a, a complication beyond any understanding because it is just so uh, mysterious and powerful. But Jacob, to become Israel, he wrestled overnight. He had his hip popped out to get his blessing. So he had to wrestle for what he for what he was praying for. Um, there's one in, I believe it's First Chronicles 4.10. It is the prayer of Jabez. He was born uh, to a mother. He, uh, when he was born, he, he caused a lot of pain to his mom, and so he, he was named Jabez, which meant to cause pain. Um, in his older years, he was tired of it, and he just literally called out to God one time and said, God, bless me indeed. Expand my borders. Extend your hand to me. Keep me safe from you and keep me from causing pain. And I think God heard that and gave that to him. <clears throat> okay, so now I want to jump into Matthew. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 6 and we're going to start at 1. Now before we jump into that, um, I kind of want to get into the question of even asking how to pray. Because a lot of people think that uh, there are such things as stupid questions where I do not believe there are such things as stupid questions. I think the stupidest question is the question that doesn't get answered, being you won't get an answer to the question you may need an answer to. So when they asked how to pray, I, I think that was a very good question. So in uh, Matthew 6, it starts out by uh, uh, Jesus talking. It says, TK, Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men. To be, to be, this is New King James, by the way, to be seen by them. Otherwise, have no reward for your father, from your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, and that they may have glory for men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have the reward. That is the reward. But when you do your charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. And I also like how we're going to get into, you know, how we call him Father and all that good stuff as well. Um, <clears throat> so, and that's basically the start of it. Um, we're going to jump a little bit ahead here to... Um, verse 9, well, we'll, we'll go to 8 where it says, because uh, that's when it's like, well, therefore do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need, or before you ask it. And one thing I want to get into, too, is when we get into this prayer, the Lord's Prayer, it's not, it's not a selfish prayer. It's never an I. Can I get this, Father? Can you do this for me, Father? To us, give us this daily bread, which I think is in my opinion, uh, you know, uh, the kingdom play, his, his will. Um, but they ask him, and uh, know the things you have need to, uh, of before you ask him, in this manner, therefore pray. And I'm just going to start out with this here. I got to go. Hold it up like this. All right, hold it up like this? Yep. It's so loud, though. Here, let me turn it up. No, okay. no, you don't have to, bro. I got it. There you go. All right. So, Matthew 6, 9 says, In this manner, therefore pray, Our heaven, heaven, our Father in heaven, hallowed be, our, be your name. Now, honestly, to tell you the truth, I didn't exactly know what hallowed mean. I assumed it meant holy. I looked it up. It means set apart, consecrated. Um, and so right now, I mean, starting off in prayer, just acknowledge that our God is our Father in heaven. And he is holy, he is consecrated. And the first thing we should do is give him thanks 
and we should exalt his name for just for who he is and worship him for all his goodness that he does for us. Um, I mean, even things that we don't ask for, he gives to us, you know? Like, um, and again, there are no dumb questions. <clears throat> And then we're gonna jump. We're gonna jump to ten. This one's a little difficult. God's will and surrenderance is what I call this one. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Um, I don't know about you, but I just uh, I just continue to rejoice in this part and, and pray. Um, a lot of my prayers actually consist of a lot of thanking and being happy until I get to something where which we'll get to our our. our and we'll get to that towards the end. But, uh, let's see here. Um, we know that uh, heaven is perfect uh, and uh, that, I need to write there, that it is his, it bringing his kingdom, to, it, we, he wants us to bring his kingdom to earth. Um, it goes without saying me in that way and would be uh, I need to write so much better. I'm sorry. But I believe this is the part of pray. We ask, what shall I do? Uh, what shall I do today to, to figure out your will? Um, ask his will for for your life. Now being now being God is now now being that God is love. Um, what better way, uh, if not than any way, to bring his kingdom here? other than to uh, love. And actually, I want to go over to 1 Corinthians 13. If we can read that real quick. I'm going to read it a little bit different. I believe it, it shows a little bit more of, of how much He loves us. I'm going to read it this way. I'm going to read that. It is a chapter of love, so obviously. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but have not Jesus, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, but if not Jesus, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but not have Jesus, it profit me nothing. Jesus suffers long and is kind. Jesus does not envy. Jesus does not braid itself around. He is not puffed up. Does not behave with me does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Jesus never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror, dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now abide faith, hope, Jesus. These of these three. But the greatest of these three is Jesus. And I believe that just reads an entirely different way. Putting his name in there just makes it feel so much more. But a closer relationship. Um, and that's exactly how we should approach God when we, uh, when we pray. We should acknowledge that he's our Father and we should... Um, make that 
relationship, establish that relationship so that we are closer because he wants to, he wants us to talk to him. He wants he wants to know everything about us even though he knows everything about us. He wants us to tell everything about him. Um, he wants to tell us everything too, and I believe that's the hardest part is being able to listen to God and what it is he has saying for us. Um, whether it be through um, uh, just signs or, or um, uh, signs or wonders, but um, he he wants us to he wants us to love him. He loves us and he wants to talk. And we never bug him too much. Um, I was good. There's a part of this where um, you know sometimes it takes a while for us to get what we are praying for, and it brought me to the uh, the widow and the judge. And she was ever, 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 ever persistent, and eventually the judge uh, went in her favor, and she got what she was was asking for. And I don't think you can ever bug God. I mean, I, I really don't think so. You can ask God over and over and over and over and over again. The thing that happens is it, when people give up, well, when people don't give what they are praying for, they give up. And God's not going to give you something that you give up on, I don't believe. You gotta keep praying for it, whether it's small or big. Or, um, and that's uh, recently I, I've noticed that. Um, don't stop praying, just pray continuously. And I mean, God's will is what? First Thessalonians 15, 16 to uh, what is it, 5, 6, 15, 16. Rejoice always and pray without ceasing. Now, um, that takes me to pray without ceasing. I heard, I forget who, I think it's who. I don't know who said it, but the man said he never prayed longer than five minutes, but he never went five minutes without praying. So he, that was basically praying without ceasing, just it wasn't complete ceasing. And I've actually played, prayed for like seven hours straight. I don't know, that was kind of, that was kind of weird when I was in the Pentecostal church. So, um, let's see, yeah, where am I at? Oh, I just read the, the Corinthians. Um, um, let's see here. Give us this day our daily bread. When we ask for exactly what we need and ask in faith, He gives it to us. He won't give us any more than we need or any less than we, uh, than we don't need. Um, in fact, I forget where it was, but it's Old Testament. They got greedy and their food spoiled. And they got even more greedy and they gave them quail and the quail started coming out of their noses and they died. So it's just this, I believe this part right here, being the third part, when you get to it, just ask for what you need for the day, you know, whatever it may be, if it's big, small. Um, he knows what it is you need for the day. Um, that being said, he doesn't want, if, if you know this, you shouldn't be out seeking something else that might hinder what he wants to give you help. Which is the hard part, you know what I mean? Following His will and, and doing what He asked us to do. Um, Jesus was, uh, and then, I don't know how I got into this, but um, Jesus was tempted, fasted, when He was fasting, He was tempted by uh, by the devil um, for food. So I can see how this goes right here. And, um, Jesus, the way He responded was, um, man should not live off better alone, but off out of, off of every living word that comes from the mouth of God. And that basically is what that is right there. Um, I wrote down Matthew 4 4 because that's where that one was at. And I just wanted to read that. And then also bring you to Proverbs 3 5 and 6. Do not be under understanding but God's. He will make all paths straight. He will take you to where you need to go. I, I think when I was in that home, I had no idea where I was going when I left. I hopped on the bus, I started reading Joshua, and I ended up in a new house where I'm living now. You know what I mean? So it was just, when you when you trust in God fully and faithfully, He will make it happen. Um, I believe it even says it in Mark 11, 24, when you ask and you ask in faith that you've already received it, it's already yours. Um, he will take care of us. He will take care of us. This one's one of my favorite parts right here. Um, let's see here. And that's where it goes into being when he says, and forgive us this, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive us for those who trespass against us. It, 
it definitely is one of the hardest things to do, but um, for me, um, how can I withhold something that was given to me so freely, undeservingly, and unattainable, you know? Like, he gave it to me, so there's no reason I should withhold it from anybody else. And um, so if I have the opportunity to extend grace, because this year, you know, it's about giving, giving grace, getting grace, and giving grace. Um, and if he's given grace to us like we, like he does, and his mercy that lasts forever, we should be doing the exact same thing, and that's seeking his will as well. And when you're seeking his will, he will give you what you what you're asking for in prayer, I believe. Um, let's see here, where am I? I need to get a little bit more organized next time. Um, let's see, I'm going to jump this prayer. And this being the last part of the Lord's Prayer, um, uh, let's see, is this the, is, yeah, about being delivered from temptation and uh, delivering us from temptation and, and keeping us safe and, um, I'm sorry, I think I... Thirteen is, uh, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And that, that's the, the, that part there is when we, if, when we extend our request to him. We make it known what it is we need from him. And there is nothing too little or too big to ask for God. Again, it, it, I mean, if you ask for a million dollars, it's probably not going to happen, you know? But uh, within reason, and if you are if you are doing His will and serving His will, He will, he will most definitely take care of you. Um, and that just brings me to being authentic with God, like, and just it, it, especially the acknowledgement of Him being your Father. I mean, when we wanted something as children, where did we go? We went to our Father, and God was the, we we could ask our Father for things that you couldn't ask my father for. You know what I mean? So, and God is the father of all of us. We can all ask him for everything and anything. He can grant anything. <laughs> it was his, it was his omni, omni presence, omniscience, omniscience. Um, but, yeah, it's just about being honest and, and, and I mean, you can't lie from God anyways, you know? Why would you want to try to do that? All darkness comes to light, so... Um, it all comes to light. That's something I've realized here, you know, uh, recently. And honestly, um, it's kind of weird that I am speaking on something like this because I, I laugh in a prayer life. Um, and I, I've been watching a lot of videos and supposedly a lot of Christians lack in their prayer life, um, which I can understand. They get busy. Um, we, we have things to do, but I have a book at home that I'm going to start reading that says, Too Busy Not to Pray. I mean, so I'm, I'm thinking it's got something to do with while you're, while you're working, just go ahead and get some prayer in, you know? Um, let's see here. Oh, no, I forgot to mention this in the beginning. A secret place. Get into a secret place. Don't do it necessarily out of the open. It's always good to, to be with the brother in and pray together. Um, but it, find a secret place, I and mean, some people's secret places are weird. Um, as as y'all know, mine are the streets. When I walk in, I I never pray or meditate more than when I'm out there. Um, 
that is just uh, that is just where I feel comfortable and close to God, and and so I can bring my I can bring all my requests to Him. Um, I see here. It's about me. Make time. Now, unless you make time for God, I think it makes sense. Jesus would be in a uh, certain place by praying just in. He, Jesus would usually go off somewhere and pray. Um, he would uh, leave the disciples to go and pray. Um, and Jesus was, was how do I put it, a tough cookie just because of the, what he knew he was going through. And when he was in the garden before the Calvary, and, he asked him to cut the pass. See, now that's God's will. That, that's him doing like God's will. When he said, God, if you can have this cut pass for me, it's not your will. Because I don't know a single human that can do something like that. He bore every single thing that we that we cannot we cannot burden. And that's why we have and that's that's why in our prayers we have forgiveness, because that's just that's that's something we cannot handle. All short all short is cannot handle. And it's Oh, I have so much love to Jesus for the fact that he was able to do that. He was able to do that for us. For us so that we can so that really we can just believe in him and, and worship him and, and, just, and just love him because of who he is and and the only way to the Father is through Jesus. So we gotta follow Jesus, he's the way, he is the truth, he is the life, and he will get us to the Father. Um Let's see here. Real prayer starts with prayer. Uh, being around God cannot substitute being alone with God. I don't remember exactly what that meant. And then I just have some scriptures I want to go over real quick, which is this, about Jesus praying. And then you know, I'm going to finish up. And then, yeah, we're going to give you a laptop next time, bro. <laughs> oh, and actually, I want to talk about real quick. Love is prayer. Prayer is love. Um, and I love asking children for prayer because they're just so sincere and innocent, and their prayers, I believe, get heard just like that. Like, you know, they're just innocent. Childlike faith. We talked about that earlier, I think, or at, at, a, at a recent service. But... When a child prays, they're just so sincere about it. And and again, the word says when you two or more come to an agreement, and if you're just as sincere as that child praying for you, you're, you're gonna get it. You're gonna get it. And I've got, I've seen things like that. I've <laughs> I've prayed for some of the weirdest things ever, just like necklaces, sweatshirts, things like that. I know it sounds weird, but I got it. Like the next day, you know, it was just I know that's a weird like example, but that's the example that God will give you anything. And you know, He will guide you in every way, like even when you don't know where you're going, He'll take you there. Alright, let's see. Why'd you let me bring all these papers, Devin? <laughs> And another thing with prayer too is uh, something that I was watching. I was watching a video. Um, sometimes we don't pray because we're not bothered enough about necessarily things that are going on in our city. You know, uh, like if, if something's not bothering you, you're not gonna pray about it. I mean, for instance, if I just keep looking you, John, if this is gonna bother you, you're gonna want me to stop, and you're gonna tell me to stop. But I mean. The instance I was thinking about was just like homelessness, addiction, you know, things like that, crime out there. And until it starts really bothering us and we start praying about it, I mean, what kind of change is really going to happen, you know? Like, I bet it just it's got to bother you. It's hard. Mm -hmm. Never, never give them the paper, bro. Never again. I wrote down some good scriptures. You guys want to check them out, though? First John 1 9. I forgot what that one says. I think it has to do with confessing sins.
These are just a few scriptures of uh, how Jesus prayed. Not necessarily like teaching of how we prayed, but uh, and I'm going to try and flip to the scriptures real quick too. Um, Jesus usually uh, prayer for guidance in places of solitude. So when he needed guidance, he seemed to go to a place of solitude. And that's in Mark 1 to 135. He woke up early before daybreak in the morning to go in solitude to pray for guidance. Luke 5.16, but Jesus often withdrew to lonely places to pray. Um, one? Is there one again? Um, Luke 10.21, let's go there. said to the disciples, it is impossible that no offense should come, but woe to him. It would be better for him if a milestone were hung around his neck and he were thrown. That's not the one. That's not the one. 17 and 11. Let's check that one out. Now it happened. No, that's not the one either. <laughs> so sorry. Alright, we're going to look at Luke 10, 21. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. And Jesus prayed. In uh, Mark 14, 22, Jesus uh, prays for uh, Thanksgiving, which I, that's like most of my prayers are Usually praise and thanksgiving because I've got so much to be thankful. Every day, every morning I wake up, I'm just, I'm just thankful. In Matthew 26, 3, Jesus prayed in a, uh, uh, in a perspective and with an attitude of uh, re uh, what is it? Uh, remembering uh, submission. And in Luke 22, 24, Jesus prayed uh, in times of anguish. I guess it's in times of anguish in, in Luke 22, 24. And then also, do you remember what he said when he was on the cross? What he prayed for? What he prayed for us? For, they, you know, forgive, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. And, yeah. Which, again, that's, that is, that's, that's amazing that he can do that. And then, especially asking to have that cut pass before he even went to that. Um, but, yeah, it's just authenticity. Go to God. Be real. Don't be... I know a lot of times, sometimes, people are ashamed. And even I'm sometimes really ashamed to pray in public or you just run other people, you know? Um, but I, I, that's something that we need, to, we need to get past. And we need to just communicate with God. He wants to talk to us. He wants to talk to everything about us. And, I mean, He's our Father. He's our Father. Like, who doesn't want to talk to the Father and vice versa? Um, so that is most definitely one thing that I'm going to dedicate more of my days, even if it's just a couple minutes into praying. Even if it's just, I, like, I mean, I really don't even have anything to ask for. I mean, and that's another thing as well. Um, just because I don't have anything to ask for, doesn't I mean, I can't ask for things for other people. And that's what, that's what we should be doing. Like, that's God's will, I believe. We should be praying for those around us and praying for their needs and at seeing if they need anything and just having their hearts touched. Um, but definitely start off making that relationship with, with God and Father, thanking Him for being who He is, asking Him for forgiveness, asking for forgiveness for those that you've, you've passed, and, uh, and then make your request known to Him, and He, he will grant it. And, uh,
God, we just thank you for the message that was spoken today from Nick, and we just ask that as his words were being said, that it was just being received into the root of our hearts, Lord God, and that we'll continue to meditate on this word throughout our weeks, Lord. We just thank you for his heart, and we just uh, thank you for anyone who is listening to this message, and also just all of the youth, Lord, and everything they're going through. Just give them a peace, give them a strength, and be their fortress right now, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. All right. And so for those of you that are currently watching right now, um, some of the things that we need to be uh, ready for is that these few weeks going forward is that we're going to be um, doing live streams at 6.30 p.m. every Sunday night. And also, um, we're going to be looking into ways where we can provide an, uh, a way of fellowship and connection for you guys. Um, we need to talk to the leadership about some ideas we have, and we will get right back to you guys as soon as we can. So thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, you guys can find out more of these videos on YouTube, on our, on our Instagram page, and at our website, ctfboulder.com. All right. Love you guys. We're good now. That was about a half hour. Yeah, that was I, good. I, I wasn't organized quite as much as I should have been. Uh, no, that was, dude, that was awesome. It was good, man. It was. There was so much more I wanted to say, but I got